Okay, it says find the other angles of a parallelogram if one angle is 4 degrees. Well, I'm not going to draw it 4 because that's a pretty tiny looking angle. But let's just draw a parallelogram. Let's say we know one of the angles is 4 degrees. Since these top and bottom lines are parallel, this angle up here is also 4 degrees. And so this angle is, is 180 minus 4, or 176 degrees. Okay. Now coming over to here, since these two lines are parallel, this 4 degree angle would be equal to this 4 degree angle. And so this is a 4 degree angle. Okay. And then coming down from this one to this one, this one is a 4 degree angle. And so this one over here would have to be 176. So it's going to be 4, 176, 4, and 176. Okay. But if one of the angles is 57, well, it's the same general idea. Say this is 57 degrees. Then this is 57 degrees because those are corresponding angles when you have two parallel lines here. Subtract from 180. This is 123 degrees. Okay, and then if that's 57, let's use a little different reasoning. This one and this one are alternate interior angles, so this one's 57 degrees. Okay, and um, so this one is 57, so this is 57, so this must be 123 again. So there you are. So it turns out the opposite angles will be 57, and the other opposite angles are supplementary to those. Okay, if L is parallel to M, um, what is X? Okay, well, and the hint is very good. It's, it's a, a sign of growth is where you're not going to need these hints, but for now the hints might help you along. And so this is just a B here. We're going to go through that. But if you draw a line here parallel to the other two, now it looks a lot different. If that's 27, this is 27. If this is 55, this is 55. And so the angle here, x, is really the sum of these two. Eighty-two degrees. It's supposed to be a degree mark. Okay. Basically, if you look at a pattern and it doesn't look like it has all the lines you want. You're free to add more lines if you think something might be useful. Okay. It says use a protractor and a ruler to help you accurately draw a regular uh, equilateral triangle: four gone, five gone, six gone, eight gone. Okay. I'm going to leave that for you to try with a protractor and a ruler. Basically, what you're going to need to do is to figure out what angles you're going to need. For an equilateral triangle, you need 60 degree angles. For a foregone, you're going to need 90 degree angles. That's a square. For a regular pentagon, it's 108 degree angles. For a six gone or hexagon, it's going to be 120 degree angles. And an eight gone, we figured this out a couple of problems ago, is 135 degree angles. Okay, once you have the angles, you need to know if it's going to be a regular, it says regular here, right? Uh, if it's a regular one, uh, draw the first side a certain particular length that's going to be easy to duplicate. Measure with a protractor to get the direction for this one, and then draw your line and measure your next side, and then keep going. Okay, so this one is sort of a, pr a practice problem uh, in terms of drawing and measuring accurately. You're going to find that doing the, the various figures in this way, it will tend to uh, lead to accumulated errors. So as you get to more sides, if you have a little bit of measurement error in your angle and a little more here, you can get so it sometimes doesn't close properly. So you need to try and do as accurately as possible to get these things to close right. And there's other ways of doing these figures uh, more accurately, construction methods and so forth. It'll get around some of that cumulative problem. But for now, this is what uh, they're asking you to do. So I'm just going to leave it here as, in, as a practice problem in accurate drawing. Sharpen your pencil. The following figures are distorted. 
make an accurate drawing of each figure where each segment is drawn with length 5. Okay. Well, here, if I have a triangle here and each length is 5, that has to be an equilateral triangle, right? And then you put another triangle back to back with it and it's going to look something like that. And this is like three equilateral triangles. So I have one here, and another one here, and another one here. Okay, I'm just sketching these, but my sketches are more accurate than these. Here's one, two, three, four. Hmm, okay. So we'll start with this one up here, and add a, another one here, and add another one here, and another one here. There we go. Okay. Which of the figures in the preceding exercise tile plane when drawn correctly? Um, you can play with this. But notice that all of these are made up of equilateral triangles. So the angles look like they have a chance of succeeding. Like here, uh, in order to fit into this little gap, I would just need uh, two more of these little pointy ends here. It looks like I could uh, put an end in here and go around. So it looks like, I'm going to take a guess that all of these are. This one just forms a quadrilateral. Yes, this we definitely know that will. One, two, three, four. That's a quadrilateral. Yes. This is not a quadrilateral, but I think the answer is still yes. Uh, do it. See if you can construct that. Okay, let's uh, have a little exercise in creating tools in Geometer Sketchpad. I'm going to try and actually do a tiling the plane with that figure we had. So first I'm going to take a line segment, and then I'm going to select the whole thing, including the endpoints. I'm going to double-click that one to make that the center of rotation. I'm going to go quickly here. I'm going to transform, rotate by 60 degrees. That brings this point up to here. And then if I uh, complete the triangle, I have that. Okay. Then I select everything. And so I'm going to have all of the steps I just did encapsulated in a new tool. And this is the, the way you do that. It says Custom Tool. And so here I would say Create New Tool, and then you can give it a name. And I've already done that, and it's called Equilateral. Okay? So now I'm just going to use this Equilateral tool. And notice that once I've done this construction once, I can just do it again. In fact, I can build structures like this by linking them together and so forth, right? So now, turns out the next step is to use that tool and uh, construct um, this other figure that we're actually interested in which is basically made up of four equilateral triangles in this kind of a pattern. Then I select all of that, and I capture it as a new tool, except I've already done that, and I've called it four triangles down here. So if I just use that, so I could just say create new tool and give it a name. I did that, I gave it a name, and here it is. So I'm just going to use this tool now, and notice that that tool will draw these. Okay. Now, it's a little bit tricky to use this because it's sort of an odd shape. And the side I'm using as my defining side starts with the center and comes out. It starts like from here to here. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a new one of these. For instance, if I wanted to put a second one back to back here, I could do it that way. And I think right now you can see how if I did a bunch of these, I'd get a strip. And so I'd get a bunch of infinite strips, and I could put these side by side, and you'd think, I would think that would tile the plane. Um, it's a little trickier. How do you fill in this gap here? Let's erase some of this. Okay. How would I fill in to this? And it turns out, let's see. If I start here, I can go to there. And then if I start... I start here, I can go there, and then if I start here, there, that fills it in. I had to play around before I could figure out how to do that. 
But in any case, there you see we filled in this gap that wasn't that was there. Now any of these angles that are uh, this, this kind of angle here, I can put a new copy on that. And so from there, let's see, from here I'd have to come this way. And notice that'll fill that gap. Okay. So we have a way to tile the plane with these kinds of figures. So the answer is yes, it will tile the plane. What kind of triangle must the large triangle be? Explain. All right, so notice we have y, and here's y, and x, and here's x. And so for the large triangle, the, the sum of the angles is 2x plus 2y. And that has to add up to 180. By the way, that was the hint as well. Okay. And so let's just solve the equation a little bit. Uh, factor out the 2 here. Now 2 times that is 180. Divide by 2. So x plus y equals 90. Okay. Well, here, look at this. There's x and y. So it looks like that's a right angle. So here's a right triangle. So what kind of a triangle is it? It's a right triangle. And so x plus y here is 90. x plus y here is 90. The two acute angles of a right triangle have to add up to 90 as well. So this is a right triangle. Okay, and that finishes this set of problems.